Good morning, youth, and I hope you are well. This Sunday, we are looking at a topic that God has said to me is really important to us in this time. We are looking at comparison. Now, we're having less time with each other. So perhaps we're not comparing ourselves directly all the time in that way. But I wonder how much time are you spending online, in social media, in those sorts of places, and how much does comparison affect your life? So the first thing I want you to do is pause and think. Three questions are going to come up on screen in just a moment. And the questions are, do you compare yourself to others a lot? The second thing, when was the last time you compared yourself to someone else? And the third, why do we compare ourselves to others? So when the questions come up on the screen, take time to pause and think through what are your answers to those three questions. Okay, the next thing I want you to do is I need you to grab some paper, A4 or preferably even bigger, but I want you to get some paper and do five circles on a piece of paper a slide's going to come up on the screen in just a moment. And in each of the circles, I want you to write one of these things. So you need to write relationships in one, social media in another, appearance in another, school in another, and church slash faith in the other one. And I want you to pause this video and write down how do you compare yourself with others in each of these ways? So here comes the slide. And again, take some time to have a think about these things. Next, we're going to take a look at a scripture and it's Philippians 4 and it's verses 11 to 13. So feel free to turn to that in your Bible. I will read it for you. And it says this. I am not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to be plenty, to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Now, you might notice this is a quote from me because it says that someone is OK, whether they're, if they're hungry. You know me. I'm not OK if I'm hungry. So how could that be me? This is Paul and he is writing a letter to the Philippians. And Paul is a guy who's literally been through everything for Jesus. He's been in jail. He's been shipwrecked. He's been flogged with a horrible whip. He's been just horrendous, horrendous stuff. Even worse, he's been hungry. Um, so what is it in this passage that I think we need to be looking at? Well, he has said he has learned the secret of being content in every situation. So it's obviously something we can learn. I wonder, is it something we only learn by going through things? I think that's probably quite true in some ways. Um, but perhaps God can help us learn without going through things too. So I've got some questions for you. The first one, are you content in who you are and what you have? The second one, is it entirely wrong to want what someone else has got and why? And third, what do you think this Bible verse is teaching us? Is there anything else you pick up from it? So again, the first well, verses and the three questions are going to come up on screen. So I encourage you pause and write down any answers, because if you do this, guys, then what's going to happen is, is that when we are meeting together on Friday, because I'll be back next week, so we'll be able to meet again, then actually we can go through these and we can discuss these with each other. Now, if you can't make it on Friday, I really encourage you perhaps meet up with a friend who you know is also watching this video um, on Zoom or whatever and you can chat through the questions or maybe even chat through them with your parents or your brother or sister. And next we have got a new task for the new piece of paper. I want you guys to write the words I am at the top of the paper. 
then underneath I want you to write or draw or compose or put anything on that paper. You could even stick some things on if you've got stickers and stuff that describes you. So maybe it's things that you love, things you are, what makes you, you. And again, I would love to see these when we meet together on Zoom or I would love you to discuss this sort of thing with your family. What is it that makes you, you? The next thing that I'd love you to do, hopefully you've paused and done the last thing. I'd love you to turn to Psalm 139. This is an opportunity for you guys to take your Bibles out and have a read through. You don't need me to read you the Bible. You can read it yourself. This Psalm 139 is a really personal Psalm. It's written all about you and I want you to read it. Think about what verses stand out to you. And then once you have read it, I want you to pray and talk to God about how those verses make you feel. Maybe you need to repent and say sorry for comparing yourself to other people and ask God to help you to see yourself, how he sees you, because that song will tell you how he sees you. And if, as I quite often say with regard to the Bible, if there's something in the Bible we know that is truth. If we struggle to believe that thing, is the problem in us and in our thinking, or is it in a book that is absolute truth? And so we know the answer is the problem is in here. So actually what I tend to do is when I read something in the Bible, if I struggle to believe it, I will ask God and say, please help me, Lord. I know that my thinking is wrong. Will you please show me the truth? Please help me believe the truth. You've shown me the truth. It's already there in the Bible. But please help me to believe the truth. So the next Bible verse I want to look at with you guys about comparison is Galatians 1 and verse 10. And I want you to think whose opinion counts in your life. This verse says this. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. How interesting. This verse is saying that if you are trying to please people and not God, you're not serving God. So who is your audience? The way we can apply this to our life is when we say something, why are we saying it? Are we saying it to try to please other people or are we saying it to try to please God? When we do something, are we doing it to try to please other people or are we doing it to try to please God? And actually the best answer and the right answer is that we want to be trying to please God. Now, we can do stuff and say stuff that pleases God that will also please other people, and that's great. I mean, how much benefit can you get? Everyone's happy. But when our motives are that we're trying to impress people, that we're trying to please people and forgetting about God, then those motives are not good. We need to be really careful because Every person in our lives will one day disappoint us somehow, one day let us down somehow. That is just because we are human beings and we're all living in this fallen world, but God will never let us down. So it's really important we do stuff to only for his approval. The next thing we're going to do, we've had lots of little bitty bits of reading and what um doing some activities of writing stuff and things we are going to watch a video and it's about some it's somebody called sophie and it's her talking about how comparison has affected her life so have a watch of the video which is coming up now do you ever find yourself endlessly scrolling through instagram and feeling jealous of others or do you ever look around you and see how great people are and wish that you could be like them and feeling down on yourself because of it? 
And I wonder if you've ever looked at people who are so talented or smart and it's made you doubt your own abilities. These thoughts and feelings are all the results of comparing yourself to others. I think from about the age of 13, I've been comparing myself to others. I would forget about all the good things about myself and just focus on all the things I wished I could be. I'd see girls that I thought were prettier than me and I'd wish that I could have their cheekbones or their clear skin. I'd watch the funny, charismatic people who would steal the attention of the entire room and I wished I could be like them. Or I'd see people getting the opportunities that I wished I could have and thinking I'll never be good enough to be given that chance. Loud people made me hate how quiet I was, confident people intimidated me, and talented people made me doubt the abilities that I had. Constantly comparing myself to others resulted in me disliking myself and the person that God created me to be. Comparison is an easy habit to get into and a really hard one to get out of. It took me 10 years to learn to love myself and the person that God created me to be. I had to make the conscious choice to change the way that I think to tell myself that I was good enough and that I didn't need to be like everybody else. Because actually, if I was like everyone else, that'd be pretty boring. I got pretty good at not comparing myself to others, but there was one thing that made it a whole lot easier. There's a verse in the Bible that's really changed the way that I think. In Psalms chapter 8, verses 3 to 4, it says, When I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them? human beings that you should care for them. I knew that God loved me. I knew what the Bible said about his love for me and how he made me unique. Like you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Even the hairs on your head are numbered. You're my treasured possession. I rejoice over you with singing. But for some reason, what had never sunk in for me is that the one who loves me is the one who spoke the world into existence and breathed the stars to life. I don't know about you, but I take that for granted sometimes. If I'm loved by someone who's as powerful and amazing as someone like that, then how could I ever compare myself ever again? I'm not loved by just anyone. I'm loved by the one. I remember that the creator of the universe, the one who set the moon and the stars in place, made me and loves me. So if you find yourself scrolling on Instagram and wishing that you'd look like somebody else or that you had someone else's life, or maybe if you're in school and you're watching someone who's funny, loud and charismatic, who steals the attention of the entire classroom and you wish that you could be like them. Remember that you were uniquely made by the same God who created the night sky. And that same God considers you his treasured possession and rejoices over you with singing. You are not loved by just anyone. You are loved by the one. And I would love to hear, how did you find that video? What did you think about it? Were there any points in there that you could really relate to? Was there stuff in there that maybe was unfamiliar to you? Some things you've learned from it? I really hope that you know how loved you are just as you are. And just to finish off this session, I would love to pray for you. So my prayer will be coming up on screen so you can read along as well if you like. Father, may the person who is reading or hearing this prayer, first of all, know that they are fearfully and wonderfully made by you. May they know that you made a masterpiece when you made them. Can you help them to realise, like deep in their hearts, that they are fully known and fully loved by you? Could you help them, please, not to compare themselves with other people because you made each one so it's silly for us to compare ourselves and can you help them to love others by encouraging them encouraging their friends and family i pray this in jesus wonderful name amen and the final thing i want to tell you guys i would love to get examples from you of when maybe you have compared yourself with others and perhaps favorably or unfavorably both ways is never any good really. For me, I think most of you know that for my whole school life I was bu bullied terribly because I've got curly hair. As you can see I've got it all up here, my curly hair. And 
So for years and years, I compared myself with others, not just about my hair, but about loads of things. But particularly when I saw people with lovely straight hair, I would really compare myself with them. And I would just wish I had straight hair. And it was a few Christmases ago. I don't know if you've ever done that thing where you've got ribbon and you've tied it around a present and you get the scissors and you put the sharp edge of the scissors on the ribbon and you go like that and it curls the ribbon and it just makes it really beautiful for whoever you're going to give the gift to. And I remember I was sitting down one night before Christmas, probably with some Christmas tunes on, and I was wrapping a present and I just did that with a ribbon and it all went curly. And I felt like God say to me, that's what I did with your hair. And it actually made me cry. And I thought, Lord, I'm so sorry for all the times that I have compared my hair with others and wished that I had straight hair, really wished, Lord, that you'd made me differently, that you'd made me with straight hair rather than curly hair. And actually the fact that he thought that my hair was beautiful just changed my life. Um, I can't say that I always love having curly hair and loads of people can't say, oh, I wish I had your hair. And I'm like, no, you don't. Trust me, you don't. But I must say it's changed how I think and I don't wish I had straight hair now. I am grateful God has made me how I am because I'm his masterpiece. I'm not anybody else's masterpiece. I'm his masterpiece. And that's an incredible place to be. And I pray and I hope that in anything that you're comparing yourself with others, that you'll know that God's made you and he loves you. And there's no mistakes where God is concerned. So I really hope this session helps you and that you can catch yourself when you're comparing yourself and just remember who is who is your audience? Who are you trying to impress? Because actually God is already really impressed with you. God bless you and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.